Now our next task here is to actually save these for printing and for the web. So we'll start with our print sized file first. We want to get this from a PSD into a JPEG. That way we can actually send this off to be printed and we can receive that back as a gorgeous 12 by 12 printed on beautiful photo paper and ready to slip into a page protector. So the way we save that file is just to come up to File and Save As. This time we're going to come into our Print Files directory. This is the one where we keep, I bet it's obvious, our printable files. And that way we can keep them separate from both our PSDs and our web-sized files. So by saving using the Save As command, all we need to do is change the format down here from our PSD to our JPEG. Now, all we have to do is go ahead and click Save, and Photoshop will flatten down this image so it'll compress all of these different layers down into one layer, and it will be at the full size that we want it, so a 12 by 12 in print resolution. Talk about resolution here in just a second. Click Save, and then Photoshop asks us one more item here. It says, do you want me to throw away any data? So do you want your quality to be small? Or do you want your quality to be large? And we always, if we're going to be printing, want this at 12. And we'll go ahead and click OK. So that has saved off our JPEG file that's ready to be sent for printing. Now what we need to do at this point is take a look at how and why we need to resize a layout so that it's appropriate for viewing online. So we can see that we have a 12 inch by 12 inch file, but earlier in this lesson we actually were zooming in here and everything looked giant. The reason for that is that our computer monitors and pretty much everything online cannot display the same level of data that a piece of paper can. So what essentially happens is that your computer spreads out all of those pixels or all of that data across a much wider area. So if we were to come into image and resize and image size, we can actually see that right here our document size says it's a 12 inch by 12 inch and then it says resolution 300 pixels per inch. That is the print resolution. So just kind of tuck that away as the resolution for when you want to print stuff. And then the other resolution, it's always a measurement in pixels per inch. So 300 pixels per inch, so 300 times 12 is 3600 pixels across. Now our web resolution is going to be 72. So there's another little number to kind of set aside, tuck that in, and this is going to be the resolution or the number of pixels that are in every inch right here as we save this off for the web. So 3600 pixels across is actually, if we save this for the web, watch this if I don't resample, it will actually be 72. If I don't throw away some of this data on a computer monitor, rather than being 12 inches by 12 inches, this layout will be 50 inches wide as it displays on your monitor. So if you've ever gotten an email from somebody who hasn't resized their picture for the web and you've clicked on it and it becomes this giant monstrosity and all you see is an eyeball, this is the reason why. That photograph or that image has not been resized and saved for the web. So basically what we're asking Photoshop to do here is throw away a bunch of data to get us from 3600 pixels down to some manageable size of pixels so that we're not 50 inches across but we're more like 5 inches across or 6 or 8. But it's 5 or 6 or 8 on the computer which means that you can't go backward. If you were to print out a web sized file that you've thrown away all that data from then everything gets spread out to 12 inches and it looks very pixelated and ugly. And I have been sad by sending a web-sized file to a printer 
often enough that I've created an entire separate folder just for web-sized pictures. And there's one extra thing I do that I'll show you here as we save this. Let's cancel out of this. Now that we kind of understand a little bit more about what resolution is, it's a specific number of pixels or amount of data in every inch of space. So your paper, your photo paper that you're going to get back can really display 300 of those pixels or that data in every inch. But your computer monitor can only display 72 of those and consequently will then just spread out all of that data until your image is giant and that's not what we want at all. So we're going to ask Photoshop to throw away some of that data and size this layout down to something that looks great when it's posted online. So the way we do that is by coming up to File and Save for Web. Now you're going to get this little warning dialog box here that says, this image is too big, oh no, what are you going to do? We're just going to blast right past that, don't worry about it at all. Click Yes. And what we can see here, it's going to load for just a second because this is a very large file. What we can see here is that if we were to set this zoom at 100, so basically what we would see online, we have Eyeballville. Okay, so this is not what we want, obviously. So we need to throw away a bunch of this data so that it looks good posted online. The way we do that is by setting a new size right here in the new size little dialog box. So we set our width. You can really set this anywhere from 600 to about 1,000 and it'll look really good. So let's try something like 700. 700 and then it resizes the bottom one to 700 so it's not going to be super tall and thin or super short and fat. Great. And now we can tab out of that. Just hit your tab key. Photoshop is going to resize that thing for us. Here is a much more manageable size. So this is actually the size that it will display online. You can email this to somebody. You can post it on your Facebook page. You can add it to a web gallery. Lots of different cool things and anything you want to do online because our layout is now sized specifically for that. So you can see we, we threw away enough data to take us from 3600 down to 700. And that's the reason why we can't go backward. So we can't ever print a layout that's only got 700 pixels in it because we would be missing all this data right here. So when we are happy with the size of this, we can go ahead and click Save. And now, here is our special folder called Web Files. And this is where I put all of my web-sized files. There's one extra thing that I do just to be extra sure. I promise you, I've been sad so many times that I have all of these little safeguards in place. This one, I'm always going to put a dash web after it, no matter what that file is. Anything I'm going to be uploading to the web that I don't want to print out always has a dash web. doesn't matter to me what you call it, but I really recommend that you add in that little dash web behind the name of every file that you plan to upload. That way, whenever you look at this, even if it's in a different directory or what have you, you're never going to make a mistake sending the wrong size of file. So we click Save here. And now we jump right back in to our full-sized layout. We just saved the PSD file, so we don't necessarily need to save it again. We may get asked if we want to, and it doesn't make any difference since we haven't made any changes since we saved it last time. So we can actually just close this, and it's going to say, hey, do you want to save? It doesn't matter here if you say yes or no. I'm going to go ahead and just click yes to be super sure. And then my photograph, you can see I've converted this one to black and white, so it's not necessarily an original, but I haven't made any changes to this one either. So I can just close this without saving. And then we come back to our original screen that we opened from. So we've done a round trip out of our photograph library and out of our digital scrapbooking folder, combined those two together, added a little bit of type, and then saved those right back out for print and for the web. 
I hope you've enjoyed this lesson where we've gone through with the complete process for creating a digital scrapbook page. I can't wait to see what you make.